In this video, we're going to take our knowledge of drawing shear force diagrams and bending moment diagrams for beams and apply that knowledge to the analysis of statically determinate frames. But before we move on to frames, we're going to do a quick revision on beams and the determinacy of beams. So we'll draw a situation, common tutorial problem in statics. So we have a beam pin supported at one end we have a roller support at some position somewhere else along the beam and we're going to subject this beam to a point load and i'm going to put it on the end of the beam for the sake of argument here and one of the things that we were quite used to doing in statics was we have three equations of equilibrium so we have some of the forces in the x direction some of the forces in the y direction and take moments about some position along the beam and looking at the entire structure so let's quickly draw the free body diagram rather than the schematic of the structure we have the external load at the roller. We only have a vertical support. And at this left hand end, we have a vertical support and a horizontal support. So we could look at this situation. We know that we have one, two, three unknown support reactions. So unknown equals three and equations equals three and therefore that this beam was determinate so for most problems we look at in statics we can simply look at the entire structure and determine whether the beam is determinate or not however we can encounter more complex situations and I'm going to draw one such situation so we could have a beam structure we're going to fully fix it at this right hand edge I'm going to add, add a roller support at the left hand side an external load I'll just go for a point load P a applied at some position but different to the previous structure now I'm going to insert a hinge into the structure for a hinge like the hinge you have on a door we know that the moment equals zero at this position and we'd like to know is this structure determinate or not determinate so if we just look at the entire structure, draw the free body diagram. So we know we would have a vertical support here, a vertical support, a horizontal support, and a moment at this point. So we have in total four unknown reactions and only three equations of equilibrium to play with so on the surface of it it looks like this problem is indeterminate however it turns out that it isn't and the way we have to look at more complex structures is we need to break it down not in just a free body diagram for the entire structure but the free body diagrams for different parts of the structure and I'll show you what we mean now so what I'm going to do is take the left hand the left hand side of the structure up until we hit the hinge so carry on down from the structure we've drawn I have R A Y is my vertical support. Let me just label up 
what I mean by, let's go A, B, C, and D. If I have R, A, Y, so that's A, I have C. At point B, I'm applying the external, but the known external load P. And at C, we have a hinge. At a hinge, we have no moment, but I could have a reaction force R, C, Y. And this force is the force that comes from the right-hand side of the structure. And likewise, I can have some forces coming from the right-hand side of the structure that I'm going to call R, C, X. Let me draw that neater. R, C, X. Now I'm going to draw the right-hand side of the structure and draw the free body diagram. And just scrolling up so we can see the original problem. So let's do the easy part. We had a fully fixed support. So I have a vertical reaction, R, D, Y. A horizontal reaction, R, D, X. And a bending moment, I'll call this M, D, because it's fully fixed. In addition to those forces, external forces on the right hand side, I can also have a reaction R, C, X. So it's exactly the same numerical value as the internal force coming from the left hand side, but it has to be equal and opposite. So equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. And I do the same for R, C, Y. So I think I'm going to write that down because it's crucial. So looking at these forces in R, C, Y, R, C, Y, equal, but opposite. And now I'm going to look at these two free body diagrams. So F, B, D of A, C, then F, B, D of C, D. And I'm now going to look at the total unknowns. So looking at this section A, C, I have total unknowns. I have one, two, three. And number of equations equals three. And now I look at my free body diagram for my right hand side. I have one, two, three, four, five unknowns. And number of equations. I still have three. However, if I recognize that two of the unknowns, RCX and RCY, are unknown in both problems, and don't add them together, so don't double count those unknowns, actually I only have three additional unknowns. So for the total structure, my unknowns, total unknowns so these are the external reactions and the kind of internal reactions between the two sections at the hinge the total is six and the number of equations is equal to six and therefore this structure is statically determinate just to recap on the Looking at the entire structure, it would appear that we have too many unknown reactions for the number of equations available to us. But when we split the structure up, it turns out that the number of unknowns is indeed equal to the number of equations that we can generate. So what we're going to do now is take this concept and move forward to the analysis of beams and 
users to make a decision on whether we can use statics alone to solve for the reactions and if needed the shear force and bending moments within a frame structure and we'll do this first by means of an example so the example we're going to choose is i'm going to have a frame structure and at this left hand bottom position which i'm going to call a we're going to be fully fixed in and this could be the support into the ground i'll call this c d and b and so at b i'm going to pin the structure uh, for external load, I'm going to apply a UDL all across the top beam of this frame. And that is going to be equal to 3 kilonewtons per meter along the beam CD. Last thing we need to add for this problem is the dimensions. So let's make the length of CD, the beam, or the distance between the two supports, equal to three meters. And the vertical height, so AC or BD, equal to two meters. So we have all the data we need for this problem to potentially solve for reactions and shear force diagrams and bending moment diagrams however what we first need to do is determine is this determinate if it's not determinate then we need to use some techniques that we're going to use further on into the course if it is determinate we can just use statics so let's looking at the entire structure so first of all we have just drawn a quick free body diagram. We have one, two, three support conditions at A and two support conditions at B. So unknowns equals five, but equations equal to three. Like we've seen by with beams, this doesn't necessarily mean it's indeterminate. So what we need to do to check the definite is draw the free body diagrams of the individual sections. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And we have a moment so if we look at this joint at C, it goes continuously around the corner. There isn't a hinge at that point. So we can have a moment that transfers moments between member AC and member CD. So we have a moment there at C. So that's A, that's C. Let's quickly draw the free body diagram for the beam section, which we call CD. And again, can have a horizontal reaction, a vertical reaction, and a moment, and a D. Same again, one, two, three. Potential forces coming from the rest of the structure. So, a external from the individual free body diagram. And now looking at BD, we could have a horizontal force, we could have a vertical force and a moment coming from the beam CD. But at the support, we've just got a pin support condition. So we can only have horizontal and vertical supports. We don't need to worry about moments. So this was B, D. So if we look at the total number of unknowns now, we 
we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. But if we recognize that some of these are repeated, so this horizontal force here is the same as this horizontal force here, we can discount all of the repeated. It turns out all of the six on CD are actually repeated in the free body diagram for AC or BD. So our total unknowns is equal to 11. Our total number of equations is equal to three individual free body diagrams multiplied by three equations of equilibrium per free body diagram. So that's equal to nine. 11 is greater than nine. So we're unhappy. Indeterminate. So we cannot solve this problem using statics. We'll do one final example, just building on the one we've already done. So if I now had a frame structure, exactly the same support conditions as before, we have fully fixed at A, and a pin support at B, so that's called an A, B, C, and D. And we have the same loading conditions. But now we're going to choose our structural designers to make sure that we don't allow moments to transfer between the columns and the beam. So that is effectively inserting hinges. <coughs> and now drawing Looking at the entire structure, nothing has changed. But if we draw our individual free body diagrams, so we have one, two, three. Now at C, we can only have vertical and horizontal interaction between the column AC and the beam CD. Or CD now. We have hinges at both ends, so we only have horizontal and vertical, horizontal and vertical. And for BD, we have at D, horizontal and vertical, and at B, we have horizontal and vertical. So let's count our total unknown. And we're going to be careful this time not to repeat our counting. So we have one, two, three, four, five. These two are equal but opposite to these two, so I'm not going to recount them. Five, six. Again, these two internal forces are equal but opposite to five and six, so I'm not going to recount them. One, two, three, four, five, oops, six, six and seven, sorry, and eight and nine. So the unknowns we have is equal to nine, and the number of equations available to us is three times the free body diagrams multiplied by three equations of equilibrium that so equals nine. And so this is determinate and we can then go on using statics to solve this problem calculate all of these external forces the reactions or the internal forces between the beams and columns and go on to then draw our shear force and bending moment diagram